once you have collected your data sample and you've done some data visualization, it's important to try to understand some of the features of those distributions of the, the data sets. One of the main measures for looking at a quality of a distribution is called the measures of central tendency. So here, if you imagine that this is a histogram, it's a histogram that's been sliced very fine. So now it doesn't make much sense to show bars anymore. So that's why I'm showing lines. And one of this line here illustrates one of the measures of central tendency of this distribution. And I think you can see the intuitive idea that the measures of central tendency are going to tell us something about where most of the data are clustered around. So there's some point in the data set that a lot of the data are clustering around. And that is the idea of central tendency. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to three different measures of central tendency. One of them is called the mean. It's also called the average. It is by far the most commonly used measure of central tendency. Now, I know I said in the beginning of this course that I wasn't going to show any formulas, but I actually am showing a little bit of math. It's just there for completeness. If you're not really sure about what these symbols mean, don't worry about it. I'm just going to explain it using words. So to compute the average, what you do is you take up all of your data points, you add the values together, you sum up all the data points, and then you divide by the number of data points that you have. The mean is often indicated using um, either this Greek character mu, it looks like a u, but with this little extra line to the left, it's actually the Greek character mu, or sometimes with a bar on top of the variable name. So and we would call this x bar, this is the average. So here's a quick example. We have the average of this data set, minus two, zero, four, one, and seven. If you add up all these numbers, you'll get 10, and there's five of these numbers. So we divide 10 by five, and we get that the average of this data set is two. So all of these data points are kind of clustering around two, they're hugging two. Now the mean is very simple to compute. And it's usually a good measure, but it's important to realize that it's not always an appropriate measure of central tendency. Here you see an interesting case where, in this case, for this blue distribution, the mean looks good. It, it tells us something about the distribution. For this distribution, which is like a bimodal distribution, there's two peaks here. We can actually compute the mean here, no problem, It's but it's going to be in the middle. And that's not really telling us where all of the data values are clustering around. So Although we can compute the mean in this case, it's not necessarily so informative about what the distribution looks like. Next up is the median. The median is even simpler than the mean. The median is just a, the data value that divides your data set into two equally sized halves. So we have one half of the data to the left and one half of the data to the right. So here you see an example with the same numbers. So what we do is we sort the numbers. So we, we um, change the ordering so it goes from smallest to largest. And then we just take the value in the middle. So this is the median. Notice that one half of the data set is smaller than the median. And one half of the data set is larger than the median. One of the ways that the median is most useful is when you have an asymmetric distribution. So if you have a histogram of data that's distributed like this, so that one of the tails is really fat and the other tail is either non-existent or maybe really small, then the mean is going to be pulled up by the tail. You have a bunch of large numbers here that's gonna pull up the mean. So the, in this case, if you have a distribution like this, the mean is actually not very informative about the central tendency. And in this case, the median is going to be much closer to the actual peak of this distribution. So if you have a distribution that is asymmetric, it doesn't look the same on the left and the right, it's likely that the median is going to be a better measure than the mean. Now, the mean and the median are the two main measures of central tendency for numeric data. If you have categorical data, you cannot apply these two measures of central tendency. Instead, for categorical data, you would use what's called the mode. And the mode is simply the most common value. Going back to the example I gave earlier, 
uh, about how people get the news from these different media sources. So we would say the mode of this distribution is simply whichever value is the largest, has the, the most number of data points in it. In this case, that's going to be this one, internet. We can say most people get their news from the internet. The internet is the modal source of news. All right, so here's a quick summary. The mean is the average value. It is the most commonly used measure of central tendency. The median is the middle value of the data set. That means that 50% of the data are smaller than the median, 50% of the data are larger than the median. And the mode is used for categorical data, and it is the most common value.